And here we are back at the wonderfully wooded Sherwood Park in Warrnambool on one of the numerous stops of the Disc Golf Vic Tour here. I'm Matt Farina sitting next to a, well, disappointed Essendon Bombers fan. That covers them all, really. But Jason Weeder, how you doing, mate? Good. Thanks, Matty. Yes, uh, perennially disappointed uh, every single year. I'm getting used to it, though. But uh, yeah, back 10 here. We saw the boys rain their putting in uh, the latter stages of that for front nine. But uh, yeah, it's still pretty tight. There's only one shot, 23 of them. Yeah, no, a good competitive first nine here. Love this course, Chase. You got yep. to see it firsthand. I unfortunately couldn't make it. But uh, look, we're hoping it can become something permanent because it's, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic landscape for disc golf. It's very nice. Uh, it's heavily wooded in sections, but it's got its sort of... It is a decommissioned golf course, um, as I've previously mentioned. So, and hole ten. I mean, this is this is one of uh, their favourites. It's the tunnel hole. It's a par four. It's 130 meters, and there's just no easy way to go about it. We did see a lot of players on the day throwing rollers out to the right and playing along that road and then up, uh, as we see Aiden here doing. Just not taking on that tunnel gap at all. Yeah, just going the standstill backhand. Yeah, just getting out into the open, which there was no sort of disadvantage to doing. So, no mandos in play. Yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of the hole, doesn't it? Not having any mandatories it does. on that right. Um, it does, but um, not always an advantage. If you did manage to lace one down the middle, you were at a, a distinct that, advantage. Oh, that's a forehand from Ruben. Yeah, he'll have a, a perpendicular entry point to the basket there. As we see Blake taking the intended line. Yeah, it would be remiss of the course designer not to take that line. He <laughs> <laughs> said, boys, I made it to be played like this. I'm at least going to play it like this. Yeah, but as you see, he absolutely nails it there. <laughs> Straight down the middle. That came off really nicely. Yeah, he's in a, he's in a fantastic spot. Ooh, big spike. They call that death from above from Aiden. Yeah. Gets himself to about circle's edge. He loves that power backhand high as a shot. There's Ruben going something similar, but he had a bit more distance and... Yeah, yeah. not an overly difficult shot in. So that was a really good tee shot from him. No, they need a Mando for that tee shot. I, thought. I don't think that's how... That's not a fun way to play a hole like that. No, I don't think so. No offence, Ruben. you got to do what you do to score. But you see Blake there pitch up. For the easiest birdie of all time. I think we're going to see our second star frame here, Jace. Ruben. Yeah, it looks like it. Ooh. Five metres for his birdie. Jeez, uh, Ruben's putting's looking good, isn't it? I'd say he's 100% from C1. I'm not counting at this point, but... So he's pretty close to perfection. Yeah, so, yep. Star frame to start the back nine. See Ruben just jamming some discs into his cart there. Oh, the venom. <laughs> and the joke there, of course, is that his nickname is Blake the Snake. So <laughs> very, very on brand. Yep. He's, uh, he's not just a good disc golfer. He's got a good sense of humour as well, the snake. Yep, some simple word association there. Very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. As we see here, we're uh, hole 11, par 4. It's a pump pump, 190 metres. Let me get this thing turning to the right. It's been out a little early. Yeah, it certainly has. He's not too happy with that one, and he shouldn't be. No, definitely not. There's Ruben not taking any time. He didn't need to take as he gets that line. There you go. Yeah, that's sort of more where you want to be. Um, it's Blake. I definitely don't want to be down on that left there. It does slope slightly to the left, but you um, can see the basket just up the end there on that. Um, what did you call that? A terrace? Yeah, I think it was once again an old tee box. Oh, wow. Awesome shot there yep. from Blake. Lovely. That's how you play the hole. He's so comfortable with that flex forehand. This needs a bit of skip left. Doesn't get much. Sort of landed flat, but he'll be putting within the circle there. 
Ba bow. Yeah, that was uh, Matt from Maiden now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a lamb shank, but uh, he gets number three up there and he's parked that, so. Up against the wall. Not too bad, really. Not a lot of damage considering he threw it straight to the ground. Um, this is what we commonly see from Ruben stepping out his putts. He's methodical. I mean, we had him <coughs> on. Uh, we had him on the clubhouse one night, and really insightful um, conversation we had about his approach to tournaments and how he goes about. Yeah, it was. Each competition he plays. He actually turned up the night before too. He'd stepped it out all the way from home. Trophy. He wanted to know the line from the door to the couch, <laughs> just so he didn't waste yeah, any energy. He knew exactly how far it was. He's so. all about efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> As Aiden grabs a par from what was not a great tee shot, but uh, yeah, back the other way now, hole twelve. Now this is a par five. She's pretty dead straight. Yeah, 250 metres, so... Not just, just wanting to stay in the fairway here, Matty. Yeah, not overly demanding of distance. And a very, very gettable par five. Um, you know, I think we could possibly see these boys pushing for the eagle at some stage. I mean, look, aiden has got an easy 125 in him on the backhand. He could pump, pump and give himself an eagle opportunity, which I hope he has ambitions for. I think he has. I definitely think it's... It's definitely in his ambition, Radar. I dare say he'd be going his Halo Destroyer for this one, and that looks really oh, good. This could burnt. be full. No, he's just turned it over a little bit. Just put a little bit. A little bit too much caboose in that one. He's a man known for his ample caboose. <laughs> yeah. and here's that understable plastic again from Ruben. He's got it down there, so he's not... There, there it was. The Olympic char That was the Olympic char, -char. Now, that's, that's what we come to see. He goes the big sky turnover. Should be enough to get up and down for his birdie. Is, Blake, is he going for the pin here? Is he going for the eagle? Doesn't look like it. He's overturned it as well. Yeah. Just a slight breeze starting to come into play at this point. Um, so, yeah, just a... Being down there, not in the trees, sort of not reading the headwind that's out in the open there. Mm. Ruben looked like he was aiming for that sprinkler. And a nice little up from Aiden there, but uh, yeah, like we said, nothing too challenging for these boys. And he's not going to give us a missed putt, is he, Ruben? No, that's a tidy little turkey to start the back nine for Ruben. And a turkey for Blake. All my life I've been waiting to start playing this hole. <laughs> Finally. Saw a nice pull in the background, but I'm not sure who that was. I think it was Don Carter. Kick yeah. that one off the bucket list, eh? Yeah. Oh, baby. There's Don <laughs> Carter. Sorry. Well, you can't miss that that main <laughs> on Don. As <laughs> 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 we go to... Hole 13, it's a par 3. The boy's looking to get over these trees initially. The yeah, just spike it in to the basket. It's only 85 metres. The, the spiky backhand oh. hyzer. It's, with that, it's right behind that tree. It's got some very low-hanging branches, so the boy's deciding to go over the top and just spike down through it. Yeah, they've all got the oomph to do so in their, their spike hyzers. Oh, no, Blake goes through. Yeah. Slides that one up into the circle. Yep. No problems there. See you on uh, reaction I cam there, this, Jace. Yeah, that is me. That's deep. This one's definitely going high, I reckon. Yep. Great shot. Lovely. A shot he does love to throw there. I would expect no no less. Ooh, that was a little, little tepid. <laughs> Aiden just... Acknowledging the lacklustre putt that was. See Ruben lining up for his birdie. Hasn't missed one of these all day. Commentator's curse. Yeah, well, yeah, we've been waiting for it, but um, no, I thought, yeah, look, it's, I'm disappointed that I saw it now, to be honest. <laughs> I was hoping he'd go perfect, but um, he'll bounce back <laughs> from that, no doubt. And... The birdie for Aiden there. So getting one back on the boys in the hole before. 
Mm-hmm. Hole 14, par 3, 105 metres. And as you can see the wind on the flags there, and that Hawaiian shirt, party shirt of Aiden Howard's is flapping around a bit. Yeah, it's a little too busy for me, that, that shirt, those, those disc golf warehouse shirts. I'm not sure it's very uh, disc golf appropriate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they were dying for that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take that on board with a grain of salt, Matty, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a renowned fashionista. No, I'm you're also not. colourblind, so. Yep. See so Blake there, low out of the hand. That needs a fantastical skip. Doesn't really get it, but difficult access to this one. Again, the uh, the low ceiling is a pretty common theme on this course. Yes, absolutely. No one particularly playing this hole too well so far. Little f backhand flick from Ruben, getting him nice and close. <laughs> and a little stare down too. <laughs> he almost had a question on his face like, why are you filming me? I think I prefer the polygons of the disconnection outfit <laughs> to the, <laughs> the polygons, <laughs> the floor of this golf warehouse. But they're nothing like the double, <laughs> the double eagle disco. Tell us about Gavin Rathbun's Gavin Rathbun sponsor. I don't know if you've been watching much Jomez or. Uh, uh, very similar to the Globo Gym purple Cobra's <laughs> outfit, actually. <laughs> Look, if you can get your hands on any recent <laughs> pro coverage <laughs> and Gavin Rathbun as we move into hole oh 15, dear. par 3. The it? double eagle disc golf attire. Is that going to mohawk that eagle? <laughs> <laughs> That's how badass it is. It, it's, it's wearing a Mohican headpiece. Yes. Badass. It's almost eagle uh, fang disc um, golf, isn't it? <laughs> double eagle disc golf attire is the benchmark for me. <laughs> As we see Ruben 15 This one's slightly uphill All the way to the back fence there Yeah, tough hole this one Again, you don't have the airspace You'd like to work with You've just got to sort of Punch one low Backhand high as a flip And the grass is pretty thick too It's very, very unforgiving Doesn't give you much ground play mm. As we see Blake here Flexing one out there On the forehand This looks awesome Oh, get around Wow He's going long Yeah so oh, much force in 97 metres and he's gone long with a forehand. And he was flipping a Draco, not known for their flippage. Oh, he's gone high again, Aiden. Look at that Hawaiian shirt that's sort of pushing him up to the sky there, <laughs> looking for coconuts or something. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to be a coconut to wear. <laughs> 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 this is disc golf, not spring break. Oh. <laughs> Polygons of disconnection. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Really nice Snake birdie. Snake birdie's up again. Not an easy birdie to get. There's strokes no, on. He's pushed out. Strokes on folks, as they say there. Yeah. Now, bespoke attire. Simple. Yeah, that's neat, isn't it? Clean. To the point. Clean's what you'd say. You know, you're yeah, not wearing... Yeah, so pars there. Blake out to a two-shot lead now with three to play in this first round. Yep. Hole 16's another par three. Blake's Ooh, not making it look like one. This is very, very invalid, isn't it, this hole? Like, yeah. Very tight it's little tunnel. Isn't I mean, forehand roller would not... Is that what he's going for? No, it looks like it. Jeez, that was well picked, mate. <laughs> Very well picked. Just two... Two disc golf brains. Oh, I love this. Oh. Well, not the outcome, but yeah. just the endeavour. Yep. I love that you picked that without actually knowing it. That was amazing. I mean, my disc golf acumen's up there with the best of them. You do watch a lot of show, <laughs> man. Yeah. As we see... Low backhand. Yeah, just staying out of trouble there for Aiden. Really cool hole. Love the design on this one. Nice little entry there. And the snake didn't end up in too bad a spot, actually. No, he's got a nice line, considering it was a uh, 
Bit of a misrelease off the tee. Yeah, he could be just inside circle edge there. He won't have a gimme. As Aiden flicks that berg again to the base of the basket. Blake to save par. Yeah, he's, uh, he's holding on to that lead. To the Rad Eagle. Shout out to Rad Designs. Doing a body of work at Australian Disc Golf. So this to hold his par. You shouldn't have any problem with this. And Aiden will do the same. So we've got two to go. And there's two shots in between this card. So let's see what can happen on the 17th. Par three, 93 metres. Yeah, not as technical as we've seen, but again, low ceiling. You've yeah, got to be fairly low ceiling to get up there. You've got to be pretty direct with your shot. As Ruben with the Anheuser flex. Oh, he's got all the way. Yeah, a little nose he's in up. A circle there. A little nose up action. Got the disc where it needed to go in the end. And Aiden really uh, Oof, never missing, was it? Really keeping his shot low there as as demanded of the hole. He's got that berg out again. Yeah, things just drying up a bit here for Dossie. I am allowed to call him Dossie on coverage. I've had the conversation with him. No one else calls him that, but he's happy for me to refer to him that way okay. when we commentate. Just for the viewers at home, we're talking about Aiden Howard there, just in case it wasn't obvious. <laughs> him and I have a very <laughs> Dossie? Special, special bond. Right? Yeah. So, this is a sign of... Ruben gets off that par train. Stays in touch with Blake. Yeah. Aiden just falling a little behind Staying now. on six down there for Dossie, is it? Dossie. Hole 18. And yep. out by a two-shot lead is Blake Nichols. This is one up there. And we're going around to the left of the screen from the tee-off point. Yeah, nice shot from Blake there. Ruben, are you looking to do something pretty similar? Yeah, that was a good chance to do it. Just expert. So you've got to break through that line of trees to get to the basket that you can see just at the uh, top of the screen there, Matty. Good to know, Jace. So, not wanting to get too far right like Ooh. that, I would say. He's, he's got the full flight out of that. He though. has, but he's nowhere near the basket. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see there, the basket nestled in there. And just hoping to be able to break through. Mm, stop at the gates. Yeah, a low stable shot, which is That's pretty the much perfect what spot Blake's to be. just thrown. Get a little skip. Yeah, a little bit of a ditch there. Yeah. But easy spot to approach from, as you can see. Makes okay. it a little hard. When you're this far right. So he's got a driver and he's pulled that one. Yeesh. And he stayed right. So, yeah, that just not being able to get the shape right when you're out there. Yeah, par best outcome for him. But always has that smile on his face. Nice little flick approach. <laughs> he wipes his bum <laughs> with his <Doesn't> disc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at it. Not happy with that disc. <laughs> Doesn't seem too pleased to be on camera, but I'm sure that's not the case. No, absolutely not. He had a great time on the day. So it's a privilege to these boys to be on Park Media. Certainly is, and he thoroughly enjoyed it from what I understand. Now, the snake. Mm. Yeah, it looks like the wind just kept that one up a little Smashes bit. Smashes the band for his birdie putt. So we'll see a par from Ruben and a solid... Seven down. So the boys tap out uh, for some pars. So we end that round with Blake Nichols nine under, Ruben Berg seven under, Aiden Howard just a shot behind on six down, and Ryan Deer, uh, who was on uh, the other card at five under. So 
Very tidy first round uh, from Blake Nichols there. A thousand rated round just ticked over, coming in at a thousand and one. So look, he was the course designer. I'm not saying we're going to heap expectation on him, but he should be doing that. He's got the power and he's got the uh, he's got the know how. Absolutely, and for his first round in MPO nine eighty three for Ruben Berg. So pretty solid rounds there. Join us for round two when we come back for round two of the Hawkins Heiser. I've been Jason Wigner. I've been Matty Farina. And until next time, park, park it. it.